So, what is communism? Communism is a term that is consistently misunderstood and misinterpreted, largely due to propaganda and historical misapplications of the term. Many people link communism with the USSR because of their self-proclaimed communist party, leading to exaggerated claims and misinformation about what communism truly represents. For instance, the often cited figure of 100 million deaths attributed to communism is derived from the Black Book of Communism. The authors of this book have confessed to inflating numbers to sensationalize their argument against communism. It's crucial to comprehend the actual principles of communism to debunk misconceptions and encourage well-informed discussions on alternatives to capitalism. So, let's establish the core principles of communism. Communism seeks to establish a society free from social classes, states, or currency. Workers own the means of production, such as factories, land, and resources, and the principle of from each according to his ability to each according to his needs is put into practice. This is a society in which individuals contribute based on their abilities and receive resources based on their needs. These characteristics are fundamental in defining a society as communist. If a society lacks these characteristics, then it cannot be considered communist. While a political party may label themselves as communists because they claim they want to create a society with these characteristics, it doesn't necessarily mean that if they are the ruling party in a country, that the system they have at the moment is communism. With that, let's address some misconceptions about communism. One common misconception is that communism means government control and everyone is equally poor. This and almost, if not all, misconceptions of communism stem from Cold War era propaganda, particularly from the Red Scare, which misrepresented the Soviet Union's authoritarian practices as true communism. The association with poverty is also misleading. Communism seeks to ensure that everyone has access to the resources they need, contrasting with capitalism's unequal wealth distribution. Historical examples of poverty under so-called communist regimes are more reflective of external pressures like the Cold War and mismanagement rather than the principles of communism itself. Another common misconception is that communism is synonymous with dictatorship and totalitarianism. Once more, this belief stems from Red Scare propaganda. In reality, Marxism proposes that communism will only be achieved through socialism as a dictatorship of the proletariat which serves as a transitional phase between capitalism and communism. During this phase, the entire working class wields governmental power to dismantle capitalist structures and pave the way for a classless society. This new working class controlled society is essentially the exact opposite of the single man totalitarian rule that is falsely linked to socialism and communism. Additionally, as we saw in our last video, socialism is a democratic system in which the majority of society, the working class, is in control. The ultimate goal of communism is to go even further than socialism and eliminate all forms of oppressive authority, leading to a society free from coercive state control. Once again, the actual issue does not lie within communism itself. A painfully repetitive misconception is that communism has failed everywhere it has been tried. In some cases, what people are referring to as communism were actually forms of state capitalism, where a new elite emerged, perpetuating inequality and repression. There are some countries where they have actually implemented socialism in the pursuit of communism, such as in the case of Cuba. However, socialist countries have faced invasions or sanctions by capitalist nations aimed to hindering their success and preventing an alternative to capitalism from thriving. It's not entirely fair to say that socialism will always fail, especially considering the interference by capitalist nations, including the killing of their leaders and the installation of puppet dictators. Cuba, for example, has managed to survive, but it has been difficult. As long as capitalist superpowers interfere with the development of socialist nations, they will obviously struggle to succeed. According to Marx's theory, for communism to be achieved, it requires a global movement to overcome the entrenched capitalist system. This means that before we even think about achieving communism, we first need to achieve socialism at a global scale and abolish capitalism to be able to sustain communism. Many people believe that communism restricts personal freedom and individuality. However, communism seeks to establish a society where everyone is equally valued, with no class distinctions or significant wealth disparities. In such a society, people could actually have freedom to pursue their interests and develop their unique talents, as they wouldn't be limited by economic and social inequalities given that their basic needs would have been met. No matter who they are, all people would have a guaranteed housing, food, education, healthcare, etc. 
the aim is for everyone to have the same equal opportunities to live their lives to the fullest without the pressures and constraints that accompany living in a capitalist system. Another extremely common misconception is that under communism there is no incentive to work hard or innovate. This belief assumes that only financial rewards drive human motivation. However, in a communist society, people would be motivated by the collective good, personal fulfillment, and the innate human desire to innovate and surpass itself in areas such as science rather than profit. Work would be driven by a sense of duty, knowing that it contributes to the well-being of everyone on the planet. Alienation and exploitation under capitalism hinder true creativity and productivity. In a system where people's basic needs are met and they are free from exploitative labor, individuals would have more opportunities to pursue meaningful and innovative work, benefiting society as a whole. To dismiss socialism and communism as solutions to the problems under capitalism based on the failures of the USSR and China is dogmatic and uninformed. Criticizing these states is valid but it should be done objectively without conflating their actions with the principles of communism. Let's create a bit of a dumb yet creative analogy to try and picture this situation. Imagine going to a highly acclaimed gourmet restaurant and ordering a pizza. This pizza is said to have the best recipe in the world, capable of solving world hunger if everyone could taste it. However, the chef at the restaurant is not skilled and ruins the recipe. When you eat the poorly made pizza, you get sick and immediately start throwing up. Instead of blaming the chef for their poor cooking skills, you decide the concept of pizza itself is bad and dangerous. In the same way, when the countries that call themselves communist fall short of the actual goals of communism, it doesn't mean that the idea of communism itself is flawed. It's the execution that was lacking. Or in most cases, another chef tampered with the cooking process and ruined the pizza. The recipe itself was not the problem. The concept of communism has been ruthlessly slandered to the point where most people have no idea what it truly means. Over a century of propaganda, lies, and smear campaigns have instilled a deep-seated fear of communism, making it difficult for any to even imagine an alternative to capitalism. However, this fear is based on misconceptions and misinformation. It's important to critically examine past socialist projects, understand their mistakes, and learn from them. We should identify what went wrong, acknowledge what was done right, and ensure we don't repeat those mistakes. Yet the irrational fear of communism is unfounded. Most people, when presented with the true principles of communism, equality, freedom from exploitation, and a society where everyone's needs are met, would agree with these ideals. But as soon as they hear the term communism, they freak out and react negatively because of decades of anti-communist propaganda. Just like blaming the concept of pizza for a bad chef's mistake is preposterous, the same goes to being unable to distinguish between the failures of past regimes and the potential of true communism. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support us, and also stay updated on future episodes, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Additionally, you can support us on Patreon or visit our website to learn about alternative non-monetary ways to support our work. Join our public Discord server to become part of our community and submit questions for our Q&A on the monthly Polytime podcast. Also, don't forget to drop a comment with questions you would like us to cover. Anyways, good studies, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.